Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about something called the fundamental principle of counting. And we're going to talk about it in terms of an example here. Let's say we have two sweaters, four pairs of pants, and two pairs of shoes. And I want to know how many different outfits can I put together using these three different items of clothing. Well, if I draw a little diagram here, and if I've got two sweaters, so each of these dots here represents my two sweaters, I've got four pairs of pants, two pairs of shoes. If I take this one sweater, I could match it up with one of four different pairs of pants. And then each one of this, this sweater pants combination here, I could match that up with that pair of shoes or that pair of shoes. And now if I keep on doing this kind of matching up here, I could take this sweater and I could match it up with the second pair of pants and again this these same two pairs of shoes. And I could take my sweater, this first sweater and this third pair of pants and again match it up with my two pairs of shoes. And one more time. Then for this first sweater, I can match it up with my four pairs of pants and each one of those combinations of sweater and pants, I can match up with uh, two different pairs of shoes. So after I've matched up my sweater with each of these four pairs of pants and each one of those combinations I've matched up with my two pairs of shoes, then I've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total outfits made up of a sweater, one of these four pairs of pants, and each of my pairs of shoes. I can do the same thing again with the second sweater. This is your sweater number one and sweater number two. I can do the same thing again here with my second sweater. Right, I could just and I do it with my pairs of shoes again over here and I start taking this sweater, match it up with each one of these pairs of pants and then match each one of those up with one of my pairs of shoes. And if I keep going, then I'm going to have one, two, three, four. If I keep going, then I'm going to have each outfit represented by one of these lines over here. So I'm going to have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oops, and I missed one right here, didn't I? My other pair of shoes here. I'm going to have a total of 16 different possible outfits. Sixteen possible outfits that I can put together using my two sweaters, four pairs of pants, and two pairs of shoes. Now, another way of another way of doing this calculation instead of drawing this picture, I could have instead, let me draw a box for each one of my items of clothing. All right, so this box represents sweaters, this represents pants, and this represents shoes. And then the box more specifically represents a number of choices that I have for that particular item of clothing. So the number of choices that I have for sweaters would be two. The number of choices that I have for pairs of pants would be four. And the number of choices that I have for pairs of shoes would be two. And if I take these choices and I multiply them together, 2 times 4 gives me 8, and 2 times 8 gives me 16. This is just what's called the fundamental principle of counting. So the fundamental principle of counting says, suppose there are some number of ways of choosing one item. And we're going to say, we're going to use the letter A. There are A ways of choosing one item. and say there are B ways of choosing a second item and C ways of choosing a third item and so on depending on how many different items you have. Then the total number of possible outcomes is just A times B 
times C. And this is what we just saw in this example with the sweaters and the pants and the shoes. We had two sweaters, four pairs of pants, and two pairs of shoes, and the total number of possible outfits we could form using those different, uh, those different numbers of items was just two times four times two. Now, one thing to remember here, we're getting ready to talk about using the fundamental principle of counting with probabilities. Remember that the definition of the probability of an event is the number of ways the event can happen divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Well, when we use the fundamental principle of counting, this total number of possible outcomes is, one of the, is what we can calculate using the fundamental principle of counting. So, very often the fundamental principle of counting is used to come up with this denominator value in a probability calculation. So, let's take a look at an example of how that's used. So, here we have this example of a license plate it says a license plate can have any three letters followed by four digits and the question is this first question how many different license plates are possible so I want to use this box method that we just came up with here a license plate can have three letters followed by four digits. So here are my three letters and here are my four digits and remember the boxes represent a number of choices for each box. All right. So how many different license plates are possible? Okay, it can have three letters followed by four digits. So these are, each one of these boxes represents letters. These are all letters. And then each one of these boxes are digits. All right, well, so how many different choices do I have of items that can go in that first box? Well, the first three boxes are made up of letters. I've got 26 letters in the alphabet, so my number of choices for items that can go in that first box is 26. How many choices do I have for my second box? Well, again, I've got 26 choices because 26 letters in the alphabet. Now, my next four boxes are not letters, they're digits. So, my number of choices here, how many digits do I have to choose from? Well, I've got the digits 1 through 9 and then the digit 0. So, I've got a total of 10 digits that I could choose for this box. Same thing for all the rest of these boxes. I could choose any of my 10 digits. So, now, using the fundamental principle of counting, I can determine how many different license plates are possible and the number of different license plates that are possible are just I multiply all of these numbers together 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 and the number that I come up with is 175 million 760 thousand so that's the total number of different license plates that are possible if I've got three letters followed by four digits. Now part B of the question says how many of these license plates will have no repeated letters or digits? Okay so this is a slightly different question than part A. Again I'm going to draw my boxes here. I've got first three boxes represent letters, the, the next four boxes represent digits, and again the number that goes in the box represents the number of choices that I have for that box. So if I want to know how many license plates have no repeated letters or digits, then let me take these boxes one at a time. For my first box, how many choices do I have? Well, I've got 26 choices because I can choose one of 26 letters in the alphabet to go in this box. For my second box, however, I don't have 26 choices anymore because I don't want to have any repeated letters or digits. So whatever letter I choose to go in this first box, I can't choose that. That's not one of my choices for my second box. So my number of choices has been reduced by one. 
In other words, whatever letter I choose for this box, I can't choose that one for the second box. So I only have 25 choices now for this second box. In the same way, for this third box, I can't choose the letter that I chose for this box. I can't choose the letter that I chose for this box. I've only got 24 letters to choose from for my third box if I don't want any repeated letters or digits. Okay, my next four boxes are all digits. How many choices do I have for this first box? Well, I've got 10 choices, digits 1 through 9 and 0. How many choices do I have for the second one? Well, again, my number of choices has been reduced because if I don't want repeated digits, I can't choose the digit that I chose for this box. So I have nine choices for the second box. I've got eight choices for this box because I can't choose either one of these two digits. And then I've got seven for this box. Now, again, using the fundamental principle of counting, I multiply all of these numbers together and that will give me how many license plates I have that have no repeated letters or numbers and that number is 78,624,000. Now finally my last question says what is the probability that a randomly selected license plate has no repeated letters or digits? Well the probability let me say probability license plate has no repeated letters or digits. Well, that probability, remember the definition of probability is the number of ways this event can happen divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Well, I've just calculated those two numbers here. How many different license plates are possible? This is the total number of possible license plates I have. So that number is going to go in my denominator. That's my total number of possible outcomes. How many of them are license plates that have no repeated letters or digits? Well, that's this number right here. 78,624,000. So if I just randomly select a license plate from among all my different possible license plates, then the probability that the one I select has no repeated letters or digits is going to be approximately 0.447.